Hello there, Tom. Hey, man. Hi, nice to meet you. My name's Dr. Schultz. I heard you wanted to talk to me about Parkinson's disease. All right, what would you like to know? So, I mean, I guess we should just start with, you know, what are the symptoms associated with the disease? It's that patients suffering from the disorder develop these motor symptoms, such as muscular rigidity, delayed movements, um, tremor, and uh, postural problems. These are the characteristics of the disease. Okay, so I get these symptoms now, but what causes these symptoms? A loss of dopamine in the brain. Now, this occurs because the neurons inside your brain that produce dopamine die. Uh, Parkinson's patients, before they develop their motor lock symptoms, they've already lost 70 to 80 percent. Now, you and I, we lose 1 percent every year, but that's fine. Parkinson's patients, this is greatly exacerbated, and that's why you develop these symptoms and you develop the disease. Now, the cause itself is not really known. I mean, there's beliefs and there's theories, but there's nothing proven. So wait, what does dopamine do in the brain? The dopamine is responsible for signaling in the brain and the regions that tell you to do a movement, so whether to perform or to stop performing a movement. It's, an, it's a balance between initiation and termination of movements. Now, for example, if I said pick up this pen, I'll just pick up the pen, easy. But in a Parkinson's patient, you tell them to pick up this pen, they can't because they're trying to tell their brain, pick up the pen. But the signal the brain sends to your muscle is, don't pick up the pen. So you develop this delayed movement. Okay, so how do you treat the disease? The best and most effective therapy is called dopamine replacement therapy. And what that is, is it takes the dopamine precursor and you take a pill, it's dopamine precursor, it's called levodopa, and that drug gets into your blood supply, goes into your brain, and is converted to dopamine in your brain, and then that dopamine is used to do all the signaling and tell your body to move correctly and everything like that. Wait a minute, so why can't you just, you know, take dopamine? Why do you need the precursor? Oh, that's actually a good question. The reason you cannot just take dopamine is because it's a polar molecule, which means there's a charge associated with the molecule if you haven't ever taken chemistry or anything like that. And the reason that's important is because your brain keeps out polar molecules and many other molecules to keep the brain safe from pathogens, things like that. Now, what levodopa is, is it's not polar and it can be converted to dopamine in the brain. Are there any limitations to this type of treatment? The only problem with levodopa is that it can be easily metabolized before it gets to the brain, which makes the treatment ineffective. So do you by chance know what drug he's been prescribed? Uh, I think it was Stilevo. Oh, oh Stilevo, that's great. Because it actually blocks both forms of metabolism before it gets to the brain. So you get the most levodopa and therefore the most dopamine for signaling. So that's great. Now, the only problems associated with this type of treatment is that you can actually develop motor lock symptoms called dyskinesia. Uh, dyskinesia? Yes, yes, dyskinesia. It's, it's a strange word. Um, I think I actually have a video that I can show you and it might make it more clear. It's an intense tremor that's developed only because there are cyclic treatments. You have high levodopa, low levodopa, high levodopa, low levodopa. And basically that causes pulsed stimulation of your receptors in your brain and therefore you have these tremors associated in the muscles because of all the signaling. Is there anything else that you think I should know about? This dopamine replacement therapy actually got its start in the 1960s and prior to that time there was no effective treatment. And since then, all the way up from 1960 to the development of Stilevo, there's been great strides in research that made this possible. So any, any great stride in science should be thought, thanked to your local researcher rather than a doctor. They can just prescribe things. I can write my name on a piece of paper. That don't do nothing. <laughs> I think it's probably a little bit more complicated than that. But thank you for meeting with me today. Well, thank you, but it seriously is nothing. I'm just sitting here in class.
That's very modest, but I'm sure you had plenty of better things to do. No, no, no. It's empty. No one even showed up today. I think they uh, couldn't survive Foxfields over the weekend. 